Nicolas Cage's superhero movies, Ghost Rider, which this is a very basic ass origin superhero movie because you get how he became Ghost Rider, this little boy who grows up to be Nicolas Cage, he has a girl he likes, meets later on, his father dies, and then he has a very generic ass villain who by the way looks like vampires? Everyone in hell for some reason they look like vampires because they have white skin. I don't know why but they just do. Like the main bad guy for some reason, why is he really white really dark hair dark eyeliner dark eyes and just kind of like i was expecting like vampire fangs to come out or some shit like i don't know why he looked like that but he just did the only reference of ghost rider that i know of is the agents of shield version ronnie hayes i think is his name but i really like that version it was really cool especially on a tv show budget like agents of shield this version the only thing that's good about it is cage being in the role aside from that it's okay you know like uh he becomes like a attraction for or almost dying or getting himself killed because a demon or the devil himself from hell gave him a chance to become this writer and so he had to leave his girlfriend and he's doing all these crazy ass stunts which that first one and that wheel hitting the helmet that should look like it hurt whoever the stunt person was for that day like had surgery it did not look like a puppet at all it fucked up its face even bendis is the girl in this story and she's just useless she just interviews cage uh i don't know kisses him in flashbacks when they were younger and now that's about it he adds nothing aside from being the love interest and this is 07 so this is the end of the Sam Raimi trilogy after X-Men The Last Stand and before the MCU and so superhero movies were just Catwoman, Daredevil, Elektra, all of these other movies that may or may not be good or just good for very bad reasons just around the time frame of that and so you know it's boring you know and the CG does not hold up at all especially the look of the skull like costume of the Ghost Rider school and then the motorcycles all that's cool but the actual full looks like a ps2 ps3 like graphics game it does not look good at all there are some moments where it looks good in terms of the fire but goal looks disgusting okay maybe not disgusting that's a bit too harsh but it does not look good especially now where superhero movies they have cgi and it looks a lot better but the first ghost rider movie is essentially a basic ass superhero origin movie and then the second movie, Ghost Rider, Spirit of Vengeance, is somehow worse. Now, I thought that was not going to be the case because the look of Ghost Rider is better, but crispier and burnt. There are some parts where the skull is very dark. I don't know if they were trying to hide the imperfections, but it did not look well. 50% of the shots of the actual skull on fire looks decent. Aside from that, everything else in this movie sucks. The storyline, first of all, you have the villain who is just a human being, so there's no sticks in it. There's no tension. But guess what? Another devil or demon gives him power, and so he has to become a white hair vampire even though he's not a vampire he looks like a vampire nick cage has to save this boy because he's special or something i don't care idris elba he's in this movie i was like oh yeah let's see what he does he's in the beginning and end that's it that's disappointing the only interesting thing is cage wanting out of the deal he doesn't want to become ghost rider no more because it just sucks he has to live out nowhere and has to deal with it even the action sequences they're fine like i was bored kind of annoyed and like just not interested because nothing was interesting it was bad it was just not good i was not having a fun time at least the first one it's a very generic like i know what this is gonna be this whole movie is just nothing but all of that and that's what makes it so bad i'm glad that we're away from this and not going back to like meteor man and Catwoman. and but who knows as of recording this on march 31st morbius is coming out tomorrow so maybe they're still making comic book movies like this but just on a lesser scale some people say that morbius is really bad some are saying it's okay but i'm just glad that we're away from from the bad CG and you know things that don't matter. Now onto something really really good, Kick Ass. I watched this movie back in theaters. I think my oldest sister took me because it looked like a very fun kind of teen kid comedy comic book movie, and she could not have been more wrong because this movie is really awesome. It's a very simple, typical kind of comic book origin movie, but it pokes fun at the tropes of like you know like Batman, his parents dying, and so now this kid becomes Kick Ass. No, only his mother dies, which is kind of played off for laughs and cage his costume is essentially batman like he's just batman there's videos out there of him trying on a costume for test footage and now he's a version of batman within a version within a different movie essentially but him and glowy grace moretz their banter and their talk and father and daughter's talk all that stuff the way that he's trained her to become a badass and then even her talking back and cussing to one she talks like her age i love that the very first introduction is him shooting her with like a gun and we even get backstory with them but through comic panel 
Toronto and Pages, which was awesome as well. And so there is a bit of nostalgia for this movie, but the movie now still holds up. It still pokes fun at the tropes of superhero and is able to tell a very simple origin-esque superhero movie as well. You have like an evil corporate guy who knows like karate or something. Somehow his son, who's just an evil smug fuck, a complete fraud. He wants to become a villain, but can't be because his father's more of a badass and he's a little bitch. Once Kickass does become Kickass, the first thing that happens is he gets hurt, he gets injured, knife to the belly. Being a hero is not what it seems like. Very dangerous, very hard, and probably shouldn't do it. And then you got his friends who Evan Peters is one of them. Two Quicksilvers in the same movie at the same time, which is pretty cool. And then at the end, Evan Peters is the only one without a girl. And so he's very much lonely. Kickass has one, his other friend has one, and it's like, well, I'm like the third wheel, or I guess the fifth wheel, because there's like five of them. But yeah, he's all alone by the end. Cage does die in order to have Chloe Grace become even more of a badass infiltrate as a schoolgirl and then slowly but surely killing every single man within that building while you have kick ass clean it up still and then the epic two like final fight you have one that's just really awful on purpose kick ass and that evil son they don't really know how to fight really and then you have the really cool one with Floyd Moritz and the evil father I will say the action in the movie is a bit too much like edited and cut 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 for my taste for long wide shots some of the sequences is like I actually would prefer this but didn't really mind it because it's got a style to it so it's okay you know whatever i'll give it a pass the final kill is this big ass bazooka launching this corporate guy outside the window exploding that was awesome and then the movie ends in typical are we gonna have another one type of ending done becoming evil getting girlfriends and chloe grace going to school and there eventually was which i didn't think was that bad there's a lot of people that did not like it it's not as good as the first one but i still enjoyed it i thought it was good i might go and rewatch that after this but kick ass is still really good Teeny Titans go to the movies. I thought this movie was alright. It felt like the target audience was for little kids. And so when the first joke of the movie is like a fart joke, it's like, uh, yeah, okay. Movie's not really for me. Humor, some of it's funny. Like the whole movie is about Robin trying to be in a movie, but he just can't because Superman and the Justice League, they don't respect him. There's a movie about Alfred and like the Batmobile and then the Bat Belt, but not Robin because he's Robin, I guess. I don't know. Know, something like that the only teen titans i know is the one on cartoon network was it on cartoon network i think it was the live action edgy shit titans which that show's even okay and even down a deadpool oh wait i'm sorry not deadpool deathstroke even in the trailers it was like wait aren't you deadpool but deathstroke even him's like yeah you know he's a version of deathstroke i don't mind him but i do like him as well cage versus superman which is really weird because he was supposed to be superman and now he is technically there's a lot of withins of withins within this video of cage being essentially batman but he was supposed to be superman and now he voices superman but yeah that is essentially it i have really nothing to say about this movie it's not targeted towards me and so most of the jokes flew over my head i don't mind the t-titans i do like cyborg beast boy raven and starfire starfire being the adorable lovable one raven being you know the dark one beast boy is fun and cyborg is a cyborg and robin is robin so it wasn't for me it was all right and then finally spider-verse this is still the best spider-man movie of all time pretty good story really good animation awesome concept a good kingpin in front of the whole like uncle ben moments but with every different version of spider-man but that plays into the whole story how fun it is and all that stuff the whole multiverse or spider-verse and so when i saw this movie looking up and researching for cage movies and i saw this i got really excited now i just have an excuse to talk about spider-man into the spider-verse this is not peter parker's story it is miles morales he has a lovable family he goes to school he's like any teenager but he gets bit by a spider a radioactive spider oh yeah he also has an uncle which he will eventually die because every spider-man has to suffer we all love that and then you get the whole like hey how do i use my powers and whatnot but meeting all the spider-mens you have spider-man noir voiced by cage fun to watch there's wind all of a sudden around him he's black and white he has matchsticks for some reason and that has wind over as well and he's just that weird but also really cool looking spider-man you have the japanese version of a spider robot and that japanese girl way into the future and then seeing the actual robot go away which is pretty sad and then you have uh the pig spider-man which is pretty funny very slimy and sloppy not sloppy but sweaty and i guess snotty in a way is that even a word snotty but he was played for laughs as well big ass nose and everything you have other peter who's much older a bit overweight kind of done with life isn't married to mary J whatsoever he's just like yeah you know i exist and i gotta do my job he's jaded and then you have spider gwen who miles meets rips off her hair it's already a great introduction
introduction into her. She already hates them. Every version of the Spider-Men, they're awesome. Miles Morales is the fish out of water telling his story. Every time we get introduced to each of them, we get a comic panel of like, here's my story and here's my story. I love all of that. All of them experiencing pain and loss, just like Miles did in this movie with his own uncle working for Kingpin because he's gotta be. You gotta have that Uncle Ben moment. And then Kingpin himself, his look is really like over, like really big and kind of over the top. I don't mind that. He is supposed to be very big and imposing and so this is just a very exaggerated and extreme version of that of him being very bulky and big and large and so he's trying to get to the multiverse because he just wants his wife back or at least a version of that because he can't get over that pain and loss he has to go find another lady from another version or multiverse he's not doing it because you know he's kingpin he's evil whatever no he's doing it because he's lonely you know and then i'm not one to talk about animation i don't know like the actual technical aspects of animation but this one clearly has something different to it different from pixar dreamworks anime cartoons all that stuff and it seems like the team put a lot of effort into making it look like a comic book but also very different from that as well like it's better and there's also a bunch of videos on youtube of creators or even animators talking about spider-verse and so they're way more interesting and more willing to talk about it unlike me i'm just a dumbass a fan talking about it but that is it for spider-verse i'm excited for the sequels across the spider-verse i think parts one and two i'm sure those are gonna be awesome introducing spider-man 2099 and that was it for superhero movies of nicholas cage as soon as i got past the ghost rider movies i was like okay good we got kick-ass teen titans and spider-verse i'm gonna have a fun time and i did have a fun time especially with kick-ass a lot of nostalgia with that movie and then spider-verse is still awesome teen titans is okay you know again not for me but kick-ass and spider-verse i'm glad that i actually rewatched it so that is it for me this has been the road so far and thank you for watching